Radiohead, one of British alternative rock's giants, a perfect blend of shoegazing, Britpop and grunge, made them the ultimate 90s guitar band. They started life in Oxford, the Jericho Tavern being the hub of the Oxford music scene. This venue gave birth to other such Oxford artists, including Ride, Swerve Driver, Supergrass, and more recently, Foles. For this particular analysis, I am focusing on Radiohead's My Iron Lung. Initially released on Radiohead's third EP, with the same title, on the 26th of September 1994, before being included on Radiohead's sophomore album, The Bends, which was released on the 13th of March, 1995. Most of the album was recorded at Rack Studios in London, one of the most famous, along with Air and Abbey Road Studios. While some of the recording was done at Richard Branson's The Manor in Oxford, owned by Virgin Records, Rack was where the verses for My Iron Lung was recorded. You can see Tom York recording in Studio One of the building. The album and song was produced by legendary tape-op mixer, engineer, producer John Leckie. He did some of the mixing at Abbey Road, the place where he started his career, working for EMI as a tape-op, working on George Harrison and John Lennon's solo albums. John Leckie's discography is a mighty impressive one. Pink Floyd, Medal from 1971. XTC, White Music. The Stone Roses, debut album from 1989. Verve, A Storm in Heaven from 1993. Cast, All Change from 1995. Cooler Shaker, K from 1996. Muse, Showbiz from 1999 and fellow Oxford band Ride, Carnival of Light from 1994. Leckie conducted a lot of his work at Abbey Road, the Sawmills in Foy in Cornwall and Rockfield Studios in North Wales. My Iron Lung had a unique thing going on where the verses were recorded at, at Rack Studios, whilst the chorus heavy section was taken from the live concert at the Astoria in 1994, albeit the vocals that were overdubbed later in the studio. This is why I have decided to try and create an original song inspired by the same recording techniques and equipment as John Leckie did for My Iron Lung. This performance, Radiohead, live at the Astoria, 27th of May, 1994, was released on DVD in 2005. It was a great, rocking performance. A period between their debut album, Pablo Honey, which was straight up grunge, and the bends. And you can see how they transition from their early sound to a more artful direction from the bends onwards and OK Computer is just on the horizon. Speaking of OK Computer, Nigel Godrich who worked on Radiohead's albums from OK Computer onwards, uh, he was the main producer from OK Com Computer onwards, he was actually the understudy of John Leckie on this album and he helped engineer the album at Rack Studios for the Benz. A little fun fact for you there. My assignment for my university was to re recreate a song using the same production techniques and equipment. I have been attending DBS Music Plymouth since 2021 on the music production and sound engineering course currently. I am in my second year. They have a control room with a Neve Genesis console in it and this is connected to a DAW, a digital audio workstation, usually Pro Tools or Logic Pro. For this I used Logic Pro and this is a, an example of a hybrid way of producing where DAW and console are used in conjunction with each other. I used Logic Pro for my song inspired by My Iron Long. 
I opted to create an original song, one that I had written and composed myself, but using the same gear and technique as John Lecky did during the band's recording sessions in 1994. I began with percussion, miking the drum kit. I used an AKG D112, the closest mic at my disposal to the AKG D25 which Leckie used. It features a large diaphragm, dynamic transducer type, high sound pressure level capabilities, the low frequency peak at 100Hz with a mid to high presence peak around 3.5kHz, kind of mid range. I used the stock EQ plugin on Logic to completely cut or and roll off the unnecessary high frequencies to avoid bleed. I used John Leckie's trusty Shaw SM57 on the snare, picked up the hi-hat bleed intentionally. Dynamic flat fre frequency response and currently the mic I am using to talk to you guys right now. For toms, just like Lecky, I use the Sennheiser MD421. It produces slap and clarity and it features a five position bass roll off control which helps attenuate the boom of a tom sound and other low frequency components. For overheads, I used a pair of Neumann U87s often a very common feature in studios and especially for John Leckie's work. It features a field effect transistor circuit in its head amplifier. This is me drumming. Do my best Loz Colbert from Ride impression. Logic Pro has a vintage FET stock plugin which is perfect for capturing the essence of Leckie's URI 1176 compressor and a perfect example of a digital signal processor being used on every drum component. This helped attenuate the boom and made every source equal in amplitude. For bass, the closest amp I could find at DBS to Colin Greenwood's Ampeg SVT was this Ampeg, Transistor Solid State Amp. Again, the AKG D112 was used instead of the AKG D25, which I do not have at my disposal. Also, simultaneously, a DI direct injection unit was used to give me the option afterwards in post-production of a clean signal that could be edited. I used a radial J48. The Logic Pro stock EQ was used to cut the unnecessary high frequencies at 4K and above and a slight attenuation around 2K in order to eliminate the plucky sounding transients as I thought they were too harsh and off-putting. I wanted a smooth sustain. A fast attack on a compressor with a low ratio could also achieve this same desired result. For guitars, for Ed O'Brien's part, I used my Ebo Plus to replicate Ed's drone throughout the verses whilst manipulating the vibrato arm to create those haunting droopy sounds, those droops in pitch. Since it's played on an open G string, it's freed both hands up so I could perform this.
for Johnny Greenwood's part, I used the exact DOD Gonkulator, a 2023 reissue of a ring modulator. There's also the envelope filter, which you can get as well, which is another famous Johnny Greenwood's pedal. But this was to impersonate the main arpeggiated riff, that kind of robotic sound. The closest guitar I own to Johnny Greenwood's iconic Fender Telecaster Plus is the Squire Classic Vibe version of the Telecaster in Butterscotch Blonde. I used a Marshall Blues Breaker for the, for the distortion parts. For example, for the octave runs of the neck. Although some sources say he always used the Shredmaster, it's very up for debate, and I believe that he used that whole series of Marshall pedals. The Marshall Blues Breaker was manufactured in 1992, released in 1992. <laughs> And it was based on the Fender Blues Breaker amplifier, which Eric Clapton used in, funnily enough, the band was called the Blues Breakers. And that was before he joined Cream. And this is the 2022 reissue of it, a 60th anniversary model from the amplifier. I used the Fender Deluxe 112 Plus from 1996. The closest amp I own to the Fender Twin Reverb or the 85 Red Knob amplifier that Johnny Greenwood is associated with. The Shaw SM57 was used, which has slightly more top end than the 58. Slightly off axis, which was a common Leckie trademark technique. He did this with uh, John Squire's guitar as well with the, on the Stone Roses album. All guitar parts were hooked up to my Motu M4 interface. The live section. The live section was recorded using John Leckie's mobile recording unit that hasn't been specified via make or model. In Mac Randall's book of the Radiohead story, it did not specify this. I used my Tascam Porter Studio X8, which was produced in 2023. This uses condenser mics, so 48 volts phantom power was required. It was used on the music mode, which sets up automatically a default setting for that perfect environment. I transferred the capture recording via USB-C to my laptop, which was then transferred to my DAW project on Presonus Studio One. Here is an image from that gig where our live section was recorded with the band Breather. I'm playing guitar on the right side. And this was to impersonate the My Iron Lung heavy section that was recorded live. This was performed at the Junction in Mutley Plain, Plymouth, one of Plymouth's key venues. Here you can see that audio inserted into my Presonus Studio One project. I used Delay, a stock Presona Studio One plugin called Beat Delay to add intense delay to the last beats of the live section in order to make the abrupt transition back to the studio verse seem more smooth and therefore more natural sounding. I used the bypass in automation mode to tell the DAW when to activate the plugin. Vocals. John Leckie never stated in any interview that I've watched or read, specifically what mic he used in the studio for Tom York's verse vocals or for the chorus overdub. So I can only assume that the most likely candidate would be the good old trusty Shaw SM58 
that he used on the live performances. Lecky also used this mic for Ian Brown's vocals on the Stone Roses debut album. The Shaw SM58 has a flat frequency response, meaning that it reproduces what comes into the mic very clearly with minimal coloration. It is a unidirectional mic. A unidirectional mic is most sensitive to sound arriving from one direction, this being the front of the mic, while sounds entering from the side and rear are softened. This makes it a good live mic and means that although there is some bleed, it still captures the vocals more. But because my iron lung has a very quiet verse, it doesn't really matter about the bleed spill in those, in those moments. And the chorus overdub, obviously that was done in the studio, so there were no instruments around at the time, so that's, it makes it a perfectly adequate microphone for this. I used a pop shield to eliminate the plosives, the P sounds, those harsh P sounds, and sibilance, the S sounds. For the vocals on the verses, I added very little EQ and compression. I kept it very raw. But on the heavy section, you can notice that Tom York has a lot of distortion on his voice and also a boost in the, the mid-range, the mid to high range, um, with a, definitely a big low cut. The bass is very rolled off his voice and it's very uh, mid to high. And I replicated this um, in the section where I go you want you want it all by using the red light distortion stock plugin on Presonus Studio One and I put the drive up um, a little bit and definitely increased the treble and this really helped get that tone uh, for the EQ I boosted around 1k which is that, it's that kind of airy sound. And that really worked, I think. It captured Tom's style, I think, uh, through the SM58. And one last thing I'd like to say about this project is that, uh, so some of it was done on Logic Pro at DBS, and some of it was done at home on Presonus, um, Presonus Studio One. So, yeah, I don't think I mentioned that earlier in the video, so just in case you were confused, that's how I did it. And now, finally, it's time to listen to my original composition inspired by the production techniques and equipment of John Leckie on Radiohead, My Iron Lung. Enjoy. <laughs>
thank you for watching and I hope to get John Lecky on here for an interview if he, if he ever watches this video I'd like to get people like John Lecky and Alan Mulder on here thanks again cheers I'll do another one soon